Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, that's my catchphrase. I do that all the time, really, in real life, too. Um, and you can probably tell by the title. This isn't really going to be part of my Arachnoiditis in Me series, um, but it is going to be in that grouping, and it will have that title. This is more about what's happening with me right now. Um, I had recently in the last few months been having an issue with my arms and my shoulders and my neck and we, we didn't know what it was and we ran a whole bunch of normal tests and stuff and I had been worrying that it was arachnoiditis moving its way up my back. I went to my neurologist today which if you live in Arizona and you're in the Phoenix metro area on the east side. There's a great doctor who is trying to use Dr. Tennant's protocol. Um, I just gave him all of the information. He's going to be contacting him and finding out what you can do. Because I told him that people flew to California just to see Dr. Tennant and paid cash to see Dr. Tennant. And we talked a lot about the issue and um, the problems with arachnoiditis uh, when, during my last visit. This most recent visit was after I just had an MRI of my neck uh, because of this. Turns out I have a spinal stenosis and a slight bulge on my C6 and C7. I don't have the, I'm going to mispronounce it, shari, shari malformation. That was one of the things I was extremely worried about. Um, because yes, I will post this in our support group. I was so scared I was going to have the same thing you have, Lakeisha. I really was, and I was almost at the point. See, I'm starting to cry. Whew. But it's not. It's just spinal stenosis, and it is severely affecting my arms, mostly my right arm, because I use my right arm the most. So now it's like I have to be careful about my movement. So the same thing I have to be about my legs, I'm now having to do the same thing with my arms. And in talking with him, if you have arachnoiditis, you run the chances of developing other spinal condition, conditions because of the pain you're no longer moving so your body starts to kind of break down on itself and you start developing more issues with your spine. So, I mean, in, in all honesty, keep walking, keep doing things. Yes, it's going to hurt. Uh, do physical therapy, but light, comfortable th physical therapy that will build up the muscles, but never, never push past the pain. That's what he was saying. Don't push past that pain. Just do what you have to do to, to get your muscles back to being able to hold your neck, hold your back, hold your body in a proper position. Don't slouch. Don't. I know a lot of us sit at computers or sit watching stuff and we kind of do that um, rounded back thing. Don't. Sit up straight. Put your shoulders back and sit properly. I'm, I'm getting stuff now for my chair to make sure I now sit in a proper position so I'm not making my neck worse. Um, I won't get better. I can only stop it, I hope, from progressing. It's, um, because it's in my neck, it's causing neck pain. I have like this real, n it's overriding my lumbar, the, the arachnoiditis in my lumbar. It's now screaming more than my lumbar, and I think it's because I'm not used to the pain yet. So, we all know if you have arachnoiditis and for those of those those people that are listening to these who are just trying to learn about it and, and haven't experienced it the pain it's strange you can become used to the pain it's still there but you're used to it and when you end up with another pain that overrides the pain you've gotten used to it's severe pain honestly I mean, if we're used to a level five pain of just living with it, to have something 
override it. That means it's a level five or higher pain. So I've got pain that runs up my neck, like right below my ears, going straight down, and then veering out across the top of my trapezoid muscle over my shoulder. And then down, it kind of circles down and around and kind of affects worse on my right hand because uh, I already have nerve damage in my left hand and that affects my ring finger, my pinky, and kind of my middle finger. On my right hand, it's affecting, it's affecting my wrist and it's affecting my pointer finger and my thumb. It's also affecting my feet. Like when I go to try to touch my thumb to my pinky finger, I can't quite get my pinky to do the same thing that my, my left hand can do. So there, there's something going on there, the nerve signals going down. Uh, we're trying uh, a steroid, uh, the one that Dr. Tennant says you should be prescribed. Do I have it? I don't have it written down. Um, crap. Um, but it is a pregnizone, meth methyl pregnizone, what it's, the pregnizone you're supposed to take a short burst of um, for about a week and it helps and you can do it like what my doctor was saying is once a month to help and I might get put on a low grade. He wants to go through uh, Dr. Tennis protocol and see which combination will work because I mean, like I told him, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need, I'm going to need opiates to help deal with the pain, but I would rather try to go as much natural, try to stay away from the opiates as much as I can, but get some so I can take them when I have these bad days. Um, so we're trying to reduce the inflammation. Uh, we talked about getting uh, shots, uh, a possibility, uh, but we want, we're, we're trying the lesser route first to see because it is deeply affecting me. I lost um, all feeling on my right arm yesterday because um, I'm the only transportation from a mother with cancer. If you listen to any of my other videos, you know this. So I went to go um, pick her up and take her to her appointment. And when I pulled out of our drive by the Jack in the Box and I went to do the right, the whole car just kind of did because I guess I hit the curb just enough and the whole car did one of those little jerky things and my hand my right hand was on the steering wheel and it jarred my shoulder up and in and it was just this severe pain running from the back of my neck down my shoulder bad across my shoulder down my arm to my wrist and the whole arm went numb and i couldn't do anything and it just sat there going throb 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 throb, <coughs> throb. and it was just horrible uh, I have found, and I talked to him today um, about that, and he was like, keep the movement slow, easy, you will occasionally, by accident, jar your arm bad enough that, <laughs> wow, my son is coughing like crazy. Um, he, he said that, you know, any jarring sharp motion, he did say to go to a chiropractic, but not, you know, to give him the paperwork and say, I'm not supposed to get any sharp fast movements they have to be slow and steady um, so he did say you can go to a chiropractor talk to your doctor first though talk to your neurologist before you do it and find out exactly what would be safe for you I have a chiropractic I can go to that has a traction bed which is basically they're just using your own weight to slowly pull stuff apart not the thing where they pull you to one side and then go jab and you get that sharp. No, I'm supposed to stay away from that. It's going to be slow and it's going to be steady and not painful. So I got to set up an appointment for that. Um, he did say CBD oil and marijuana won't help with pain. It won't, but it does pass the blood brain barrier and it will help with inflammation, but it will not help with pain. Uh, so he said I could uh, use the steroids in combination with marijuana and the only problem is, is you need to have the money for the marijuana to be able to buy it to be able to use it and it's just it's one of those horrible situations um, I did try a CBD oil, uh, oil lollipop yesterday eh. Eh. 
So, and I love these people who sit there and they swear by CBD oil, like, oh no, it's the, it's the cure-all, a cure-all, and it's, no, not really, it, it's a help, it's, it's a tool to help, but it, it's not gonna cure us, it's not gonna take the pain away, it will just, one, help us relax, and, and maybe take the inflammation down a little, so... But yeah, so that's that's what's been going on with me lately. Um, I hadn't wanted to do the arachnoiditis in me series until I got confirmation of what was going on with me because I was afraid if I started to talk about other issues with arachnoiditis, which I will go into um, in part of my series over the fact that if you have arachnoiditis, you are prone to other spinal issues. Um, because arachnoiditis is sometimes called failed back syndrome. And when you have arachnoiditis, quote unquote, failed back syndrome, you can have other issues that pop up because of it. And so I kind of want to talk with him about it. And he's really, I mean, he really is. He's really nice. And again, if you live in Arizona, I would highly recommend. Uh, there was a person who just made a hundred mile trip to go see him. He was actually in the room across from me and he dissuaded the guy from having back surgery and I could hear him saying you don't want to do back surgery because you'll end up in the same condition as the poor woman across the hall. And I was like yeah it sucks. Don't do it. Just if you can deal with the pain and go through the physical therapy and avoid having somebody cut you open and run the risk of getting this disease don't do it do everything else you can and the only reason why I had the back surgery is I had three discs that blew one fragmented and was I was in so much pain I was in the ER screaming for them to because not only was my back killing me my leg was killing me I had a spinal migraine and so I'm in the hospital dealing with all of that screaming for them just to cut my leg off because I felt like my leg was on fire that someone had taken my left leg and put it in a furnace so avoid at all cost getting back surgery try everything else in your power go see a neurologist first go to a rheumatologist go to go get expand not expand use up all your resources before you consider back surgery uh, find someone who knows about arachnoiditis and is, and what the risks are all right so avoid it at all costs and again if you live within a hundred miles 150 miles of the Phoenix metro area get in contact with dr. Brandon Woody he is a neurologist he works out of two offices in the Mesa area, and he's really good, and he's really taking an interest in this because he is seeing more and more patients. And like he said, there is an upswing. There are more and more people developing this disease because back surgeries have become more prevalent. Yeah, people are getting more and more back surgeries. So, great doctor. And that's kind of my update, my own personal update of what's going on with me. I still have the arachnoiditis. It's not going to go away. I'm still having issues with my left leg. But I'm not noticing it as much because of my upper neck region now getting screwed up. Because I, I would assume it's my own fault for slouching. I'm making this, don't slouch in your computer. Don't ever slouch. When you're driving, sit up straight. Um, so, yeah. That's it. Um, I will spend a week trying to gather up all the information for the next um, actual arachnoiditis. And this is not going to be like every week I'm putting something out. Uh, it's just going to be as I get enough information, enough research, and then I'll put out something. And they'll be casual like this where I'm just kind of all over the board. But I hope you guys all have a great day. I hope you have, I can't say a pain-free day because I don't think anybody with arachnoiditis will ever have a completely 100% pain-free day but have a day where you have extra spoons at the end of the day and if you don't know what I mean that's a spoon theory google it maybe I'll do a whole video on that on the spoon theory 
because well, holy hell, I never have enough spoons. Ever. But, ah, uh, this is my Minecraft. <laughs> this is what's taking my mind off the pain. Though it's kind of aggravating not having my arms. But any, I'm blathering on. So, anyway, y'all know me. Have a great day. Have a less painful day and have spoons left at the end of the day. And I'll see you next time. Ta!